lift our hands tonight. Father, we're here to receive from you. We're here to receive from you. You're so worthy of praise. You're always working on our behalf for good. Thank you. You don't sleep and you don't slumber. That not only are you powerful, but you're personal. So just tonight, we thank you for your words. For your words. They set us free. They bring light. We thank you for them in Jesus' name. Isn't that a great song? I love that song. Don't you love that song? Yes. It's like, cool. I love that song. Somebody who falsa, you know, right now. <laughs> As you sit down tonight, tonight's a, I, I'm really stirred in my heart. Um, tonight's, a, to me, it feels like really special um, with the word, uh, I'll just say it's like this. It's kind of like when you get those fresh cookies out of the oven, um, you know, you just can't hardly wait to, to, you know, get one of those and put it in your mouth. And, um, and so tonight, we're, I, I'm going to just jump right into the word with you. But it's really kind of going to be a father-son talk, um, kind of the way the, the Lord would talk to me, uh, kind of along the lines of what I started, or the Lord had been starting a conversation with me uh, about, and I talked to you guys last week about it on Borders, and I, I said this statement that, Battles determine borders. Battles determine borders. And that's how I had heard it um, to my heart. The battles you're in determine the borders or the boundaries in which you occupy. And at the end of last service, uh, we get closed. And sometimes, as I was teaching last week, sometimes when you teach or maybe when you're talking to your kids, how many of you ever talk to your kids and you tell them something And they nod, but they're saying this. Their outside is saying this, but inside is saying, ain't no way, right? And so you know you can sense that, right? In the same way you could sense that in your kids, like when you're bringing the word to somebody, there's times when you get the "Uh uh-huh, but in the inside you're going, "Uh uh-uh, right? My mom said this to me today. Um, something that she said many times before. She said, a man convinced uh, uh, against his will or constrained against his will is of the same mind still, right? Something along those lines. So a man, uh, in other words, you can't, he's of the same mind still. He's of the same, when you're, you're made to do something of your, against your will, you're of your same mind. And so there's not that transforming power when you're when when you don't receive it right and so I thought that was just really interesting and and, and last week uh, as I was teaching I, I, I could feel in this in the spirit and I would say even in hearts this pushback uh, concerning concerning battles spiritual battles and, and and the wars that we're facing and the fights that we're facing and how God would love for you and I to take ground and um, and so I wanted to, uh, anyway so I, I felt that and I was talking with actually with Joe uh, Costello at the end, and he had said something. He's like, you know, it was never uh, the giants that kept the children of Israel out of or from crossing. I'm going to paraphrase a longer conversation, but it was never the giants that kept the children of Israel out of the promised land. It was words. Only words kept the children of Israel from crossing the border. Or from crossing, in, uh, you know, crossing the Jordan River to occupy, not the giants. The giants can't do. The giants can't keep you. I mean, to say it this way: there is no mountain or any obstacle that can keep you from inheriting the promise of God. Only words can. That's right. That's Only words can. So I want to pick up. So the words that you believe in your heart, only words can keep you from receiving the promises of God. Only a report that you believe or have received in your heart because of what you've heard somebody else say, because of what you've seen or experienced, 
what happened or didn't happen, what was delayed or happened too quickly, right? And so I want to I want to pick up from last week. This is Borders Part Two, um, and I'm going to just make this uh, statement again. Borders are the position are are positioned by battles. Borders are positioned by battles. We talked about a Missouri Compromise and the Oklahoma Panhandle and how sometimes compromise, right? Like even that allows things to be set in place and we give up land. We give up, we give up things that God has said to us. We, we compromise, right? Yeah. You see this even in, in, with pastors or leaders or husbands or wives. They compromise and the Lord said, I want you to have this kind of family and this kind of marriage and this kind of, but because you compromise, you, you lose that. Right, and so um, I, I want to I want you and I to to uh, establish this tonight that God is has always been about your and my increase and your and my um, uh, being fruitful and multiplying. Genesis chapter one verse twenty eight tells us this that He tells us that we're to actually have dominion on this earth. So in a battle, we're not to be in a battle where we're we're defeated. We're to be in a battle where we're victorious. Okay. Um, there is victory that overcome in this world, 1 John 5, 4. But here it says, God blessed them and said to them, and the blessing of God is God with you. That's what it is. The curse is without God. The bless is with God. So when it says, I'm with you, he said to them, I'm with you, and be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and conquer it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and over every living creature. He said, you have dominion over that. You, everything that's on the ground, you, you rule over that. So this earth, it was given to man to rule over. Can you see this very clearly, right? Now, I want to I wanna, um, uh, bring, a, kind of fast forward here into a time of uh, captivity of the people of God. Have you ever been captive? Have you ever been held captive in some way? Maybe it's a delay of something. Maybe it's a promise that you once held and now, in a sense, it got taken from you. And it's like, will I ever get it back? Right? And so here's Isaiah chapter uh, 54, verse 2. And the Lord's talking to him about getting your stuff back. How many of you and I, how, how many of you just sometimes are like, I'm just tired of the devil stealing from me? Yeah. And it's time you get your stuff back. It's time you, you get your stuff back. It's time that you, you do this. You get your play, you, you, you take, your, take your land back. Yeah. And, and, and we're not compromising and we're not doing some peace treaty deal. Because the devil's a liar, you know. So we're going to enlarge the place of our tent, and we're going to take back a little more. We're going to take back a little bit more because of the battle, uh, because of the battle, and we're going to recognize just simply how to fight tonight. I believe it'll be just, I'm just so stirred in my heart. I just want to give you all a bunch of chocolate chip cookies. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch forth the tent, uh, your tent curtains wide. Hey, guys, don't hold back. Yep. That's right. Don't hold back because of yesterday, because of uh, preconceived. No, the Lord has, there's plenty. Okay? And he says, lengthen your cords, strengthen your state. I just wanna, this, is this, 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 uh, this, this is the Lord talking to the children of Israel after they've been captive, they've been delayed. And the Lord's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I've given you, get, get, get ready to expand. Get ready to get, open back up and get back in that. Get, change your mindset. Oh, let me say it this way. Get some different words. Get some different words. And it, uh, the word would be, it, it is expand. So, uh, and so we were talking about how battles... Uh, determine borders. And in 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6, let's, let's define the battle real quick. 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. The fight that we fight is, is truly the fight of faith. It says, take hold of eternal life, the God kind of life, Zoe life, which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So you're going to have to lay hold of that. Take hold of it. Let me say it this way. You're going to have to hold on. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, Mark Hankins would say this. He said, the fight of faith ain't no eight-second ride. <laughs> the fight of faith ain't no eight-second ride. I, I, that's that's kind of like southern term for like, it ain't just a bull ride. You can't just go uh, 2.7 seconds on a bull and call it good, you know. It ain't, or even eight seconds. The fight of faith, you're going to have to hold on. You're going to have to grip, and you're just not going to let go. Yeah. Just You're not letting go. No one can make you let go of the Word of God. Only you have the choice whether or not to let go of the word of God spoken to you. Only you. 
no matter what. You know, there's stories about heroes of faith that died in faith. Having yet seen some of the, they died in faith. But guess what? We're so aware of time here on this earth, but God is outside of time. The way that, anyway, so the, the, anyway, died in faith. Okay, 1 Timothy 1.18. I want, I want you to see this. Um, it says this, um, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, that by them you might wage a good warfare. So the fight we're to fight is the fight of faith, but there is a fight that, and a weapon that God has given us to fight that fight with, which is his word. So every word of God is not a weapon for you in the battle that you're facing. There are weapons for the fight that you're facing today. And it's important that you have his word concerning the battle that you're facing right now. Whether it's a battle about your children, your marriage, addiction, um, depression, a heart murmur, palpitation. There's a word. There's a, there's a weapon to address that. There's, there's a weapon. So no matter what it is. And so... Um, so words. So I, I want to just uh, so the battle you you and I are, are in. We are in a war of words right now. There is a war of words going on about finances, about discontentment, about taking your life. Those are words. Words discourage. They distract. They devalue. They delay. Ultimately, they disarm you from fighting in faith. If, how many of you have ever watched one of these movies or, uh, where there's a guy and he's got a gun? Okay. And when the guy's got a gun and it's like, uh-oh, he's got a gun, it, what happens is Ben's the good guy. Go ahead, Ben. I got the gun. Okay. Come on. Come on up here. This is what you're going to show me what happens in these movies when I come on up on the stage. I got the gun. This is not rehearsed, so we're going to see if he's watched these movies, all right? So I got the gun. I'm going to, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, what's he going to start doing? He's going to just keep his hands up or he's going to try to say, hey, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, man, don't you, don't, you know, no, you know, you know. And, and, and he's talking, right? And why is he talking to me? So I don't shoot him? No, no, what, what, what is he trying to do when he's talking to me? Distract me, and I was like, well, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Okay, he, he took the gun. So that's, that, hey, good job, you took the gun, he, took, he got the gun from me. He disarmed me by distracting me. He took my very weapon that was given to me that I had, I had the advantage over you. I could have rocked your world if I just pulled the trigger. But I got distracted, delayed. I got, I got, I got ultimately disarmed. And when you're disarmed, you will lose. <laughs> When you're disarmed, you'll lose. And so this is why the enemy likes to talk with us. And so I wanted to go um, to a father-son conversation. A father-son conversation. But not just any father-son conversation. A father-in-the-faith-son conversation. I want you to imagine um, maybe you, somebody that you really would respect. Let me, I want to use this, this, this name because I believe every person here would say, man, yeah, that would be kind of, that would be really cool if I got to sit down with that person for for a little while and just talk with him. If Billy Graham was alive today and he said, hey, Becky, would, would you, I'm going to be in town tomorrow morning. I know it's Thursday, um, but I was wondering if you could meet me at the Cracker Barrel. I'd love to talk with you for just maybe an hour and a half. If that would be too much to ask, you, you think you could maybe clear your schedule just for a moment to talk? Would you, would you make it back? You would? Well, you already had some appointments. <coughs> That's a priority? Yeah. Okay. So, like, this put a, this, this, like, whoever you would think that, man, I wish I could just ask them that one question. Maybe you're a business guy. And, 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 and the business guy of, that, that has taken Fortune 500 companies, multiple, just to the top, is going to be in town tomorrow. And he, he had met you at, at, at the gas pump, and he's like, hey, you, you want to get coffee tomorrow? 
And you're like, oh, but I, I, he's, he, he knows my name, right? Like, you're going to go there, and you're going to listen. You're going to have a conversation. You're going to just sit. You're just going to take notes. Well, this is First Timothy. This is First Timothy. This is where Paul, an apostle, has sent one who was, in a sense, the one that carried the message of Christ to the Gentiles and, in a sense, the founder uh, of the church, kind of, you know. The church is uh, those saved and believing in Christ, right? Not of Jews, right? But Gentiles who called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And so this is where we get the church. The church started after Jesus died on the cross and rose again, okay? And so now the, the message goes forth to the Gentiles, and God told, uh, called Apostle Paul, who was once Saul, to carry this message. And he has this young man that's with him and had been with him for a very long time, and his name's Timothy. Timothy. So we're going to pick up here, and we're going to look at and First Timothy, and we're going to look at the whole book, okay? And, but we're not going to take time to read a lot of it. We're just going to look at scriptures. And this book is a father-son conversation. This is your cracker barrel morning conversation uh, with the person of your dreams, in a sense that you could just ask one thing, and here's what he said, would say, hey, can I just tell you something? This is what he's going to say. Hey, you had all these questions to ask him, how did this happen? And what about this? And, and, and he, as he gets the coffee, he says, you know, I, I asked you out for coffee because, uh, and you had all this list. And he goes, because I just wanted to talk to you about something. And all of a sudden, that list of questions was, was like, okay, that's not that important. What are you saying? How, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Because I want to hear what you have to say more than anything I could think to ask, right? And so here is, is, is Timothy left in a city uh, by Paul, and he writes him a letter. He writes this young man, this young pastor, this son, a letter. And I want to I pick up here in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 uh, through 6. And you know what he talks to him about in this whole book, in this whole letter, over coffee for the whole hour and a half? Words. And we're just going to go to some scripture. Boom, 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 boom. How important is the words you're listening to? How important the words that you are speaking, how important words are, Timothy. Uh, I'm writing to you to encourage you, but I'm writing to you what I want to talk to you about is just some words. Okay, so listen to this. It says, I want to, I want to actually, uh, I'm going to read it from my Bible. You put it up there, First Timothy. I think we have the NIV tonight. Um, it says this, to Timothy, my true child, my true son in the faith. Wow, that's a pretty powerful way to start a letter. Father-son conversation. This is what this book is. Father-son conversation. He says, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father of Lord Jesus Christ. Like all this to you. Next verse. He says, as I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may, be, may com uh, command certain people. So he, he said, I left you there because it's, uh, it's important that you stay there. And it's important that you stay there because you, you need to operate in a place of authority, in a place of commanding. And he said, uh, command certain people not to teach uh, false doctrines any longer, verse 4, or to devote themselves to myths or endless genealogies such that promote controversy, speculation, rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. So he says, hey, um, I want to talk to you uh, real quick why I left you there uh, to be in that place of authority and, and really to address words. What kind of words? Um, fables, myths, genealogies. And that's verse 4. Then he jumps to, down to, and why is it so important to address those things? Because words, they can stall you out. Then we thought it can delay, it can distract. Isn't that what he said? What does it lead to? It will lead to distraction. You know, um, have you ever been in a car and you're waiting on your husband or your wife and, they, and they're a talker? And they got caught talking, and they weren't really doing anything or solving anything, or it wasn't a business meeting. It was somebody that they had seen, and they didn't, ah, hey, and they just got caught talking, and they're like, ah, even though you're trying to get away, you can't get away because that person just likes to talk. And you are delayed. And where you were supposed to be, anybody have one of these fights before? Where you were supposed to be, you can't be because... Five minutes, you hung in there, and you're, you should have got out of there, and now 30 minutes went by, and you missed where you're supposed to be, okay? 
Wow. Words. Words can cause you to miss divine appointments. Words. So here's the start of the words. He says, watch out for these words. And he says, also, he, these, these myths and genealogies, because they, what they lead to is they lead to, to you stalling out and, and no longer putting your hand to what God was telling you to go ahead and push forward. And then because you're not pushing it forward, now you're, you're delayed or you're, and you're tired. And, you know, maybe you've done one of these things where you were on a project and, and, and it's 4 o'clock and you have about 30 minutes left. And all of a sudden, somebody spawns in or shows up um, unannounced, and that's cool. We love you, but uh, it's 4 o'clock, and I, we had 30 minutes left, but now it's 7.30. And that 30 minutes just got rolled to the next day, which the next day you had other things. So that got moved to another day, and then another day, and now the whatever is still sitting left unattended to. The bolts are not put on the wheel on that lawnmower that should have been done but could have been done but wasn't done because you were delayed because somebody came to talk. That's cool. We like talking, but I'm just trying to point the point out tonight words matter. Words matter. Okay? And I'm not talking about relationships. I'm not talking I'm just painting the picture about how words can d- delay, distract and cause you to Remove your hand from what would have allowed you to advance into tomorrow and mow the grass. And not have the stress about, people are coming over and it looks like this. Like, sometimes there's stress added to our life because we started listening to some words and there's no grace for those words for us. Can I tell you that that oftentimes there are things shared with us, there's things that we engage, there's things that we stop the scroll on, and the Lord said, avoid those things, and uh, those are heavy things. And and guess what? There's not grace from God for you for those words. Oh, oh, well, grace, what about the grace of God? What about his help? What about his His help was in his direction to you, but you chose to pick that up. So you, can I tell you God's grace for you concerning those things? Lay them down. No, 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 not bring those to him. Lord, what about this? Not talk about this. But repent for picking them up and lay them down. Because there's not grace for what God's not in. There's not grace for what God is not in. If, if, if you, you maybe have heard it said, if you're going to start it in your own strength, you're going to finish it. So it matters what you and I are picking up and listening to. All right, so here he said uh, that piece. Then you go on to verse 6 of the same chapter. He says, you know, uh, again, avoid idle talk, right? The uh, goal of commandment is love. He, so he's talking about why I'm talking to you about words, why I'm talking. The goal of love, which comes from pure heart and good conscience and sincere faith. Some have departed from these things, and, and what has happened? They turn to meaningless talk. Just no progress. He said it, words, meaningless no point, no fulfillment, no fulfillment. What's the point? What's the point? What's the point of life? What's the point? You ever get to the point of what's the point? Can I tell you, if you're at the place or the point of what's the point, it's because of some words. Just because of some words. So watch the words. This is the father-son talk. Watch the words. You can jump down to verse 18. So he says, I want to give you a command, uh, and I want to command you as much as you're watching these words, I want to command you to keep certain words. So get rid of these words. Even tell, tell because of the place of authority that you're in and I've left you in and you're to be operating in. He said, tell, you know, rebuke those words, but you better keep these words. So he said, now I'm commanding you, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, that by recalling them, you might fight the battle well. So it's important that we have God's words to us on repeat. On repeat. What did God say? What did God say about the church? What did God say about your family? What did God say about your business? What did God say about your children? Well, I haven't seen it yet. What did God say about what, you tell me, what did God say? Can I have that coffee thing right there? Cold brew lemonade. Oh, so good. I'm like, I could have this. 
If I had milk, I'd be have. If I had some milk, I'd have that with these cookies. Anyway. So, um, verse uh, chapter two, verse one. So he says this, uh, and <clears throat> I urge you then, first of all, that the words um, about everybody else be prayers to me. So I'm talking to you about words. The words about everybody else, you know, your leaders, you know, all men. You wonder what's going on. You want to have some peace in your life. Don't talk to your buddy, Tom. Okay, Tim? Don't, you don't need to be talking to t- Tom about all that's going on and about how Jim over here, blah, 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 blah. Can you believe he's talking about this and blah, 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 blah. He said, let all of your words about others be prayers to me and let those prayers be for them, not against them. Words. I'm talking to you about words today, Tim. My son. So, and all the way through there, you, you, you begin to see like, wow, that's, that's amazing. He's telling us how to live this peaceful life. And even <clears throat> this instruction for women, he said, uh, words. <laughs> you remember? You know the story? Maybe I'm the only one that's ever been a part of this, not just with women, but just myself, okay? Um, where you hear a story, and then you tell the story, but... You weren't there, so you got to kind of give the picture. And, oh, embellish, that's what it was. Yeah. And that's what he's talking about women here. You remember Adam? Remember Eve? He brings up Adam and Eve and how there was these words, and then she told the story. Well, God said this, but God really didn't say that. God said this. But, you know, she made sure and said, this is what God said, and then got caught. So what is he talking about? What is Paul talking to Timothy about? Words. He's talking about life and death. He's talking about words. I say life and death because life and death are in the... So if you're going to experience life, it's going to be because of the words that you and I hold. Okay? So let's keep on going here. And in chapter 3, verse 2, he says, um, I want to talk to you about what you're doing and you're going to guard the words, but you can't guard the words alone. You need some help guarding the words. So let's get some leaders. And these leaders, they got to have this, they got to have this, they got to have this. Uh, but they also they need to be able to teach. They need to be able to put words together, the right words together, words. And then he goes on to say, why is it so important that you have somebody help guard the words and you have these qualified people guard the words that can teach? Well, if you go to verse 15 of the same chapter, he says, because uh, the church uh, where I left you over, it is the pillar of truth. It is the pillar of truth here on the earth. Uh, the household of God, the, the church of the living God, the pillar, the foundation of truth on the earth. It matters it matters. Leaders matter. Words matter. Why? The ch- what's going on in the church matters <clears throat> because it is the pillar of truth. It's the only thing that still stands. It's the pillar. There's not pillars. It's the pillar. Have you noticed that? Let's keep going here. So, and then it goes on to uh, the next chapter, which is right after basically verse 16. Uh, it says, now the spirit speaks expressly. Uh, verse uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1. He says, Now the Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the word or faith, which comes by hearing the word. So they're going to abandon the word of God that once produced their faith. They're going to abandon the word and follow deceiving spirits. Let me say this. Um, different breaths. Different words. They're going to follow different words. And he says um, they're going to they're going to they're going to leave faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. I think the next verse. Uh, such teachings. It's interesting. Things taught by demons. And then he says these these teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared with a hot iron. Like no just no no thoughts no conscience. But he, here's again what he's saying. It's important that truth remains. In these days, it's, it, let me say it this way today, to us today, it's important that truth remains today. If what you and I are giving ourselves to is a lot of different words, myths and genealogies, all these kind of things, um, 
you, will, you won't know truth. And you won't hold truth. And you'll have lots of words that we'll be a part of that aren't, have no history, have no foundation. They just have somebody's something, somebody's picture, somebody's whatever. Let's keep going here. So he's talking to them about words. Verse uh, 7 of chapter uh, 4, he says, now reject. He doesn't say just uh, discard. No, he doesn't just say discard. He actually says reject. What does it mean to reject, to put away? Have nothing to do with. Like, nothing to do with. Not, not just, uh, you know, I just like listening to that. I just wonder, wouldn't that wonder? Let's just kind of, it's, you know, Ben, it's just kind of fun to talk about. You know, it's just kind of fun to talk about, you know, kind of stand around and sit, you know, let the truck, you know, pull up next to each other and just let it idle, you know. Just kind of hang out and talk about, think about. But have nothing to do with these myths and rather train yourself to be, what did he say? To be godly. That only comes by hearing the words of God. It goes on to verse uh, 16 of the same um, chapter. He says, so um, I want you to be aware of what everybody else is listening to. It, oh, no. He says, watch yourself. So what, well, Becky's been listening to some stuff, you know. I mean, I don't know what's her deal. No, I, I don't even know what you're listening to. You know what he said? He said, watch yourself and what you say. Watch yourself. It's so easy to get in this place where we're watching other people, you know, what they're doing, what they're not doing, you know. And here again, this is the coffee talk, father-son talk. Watch your words. Watch words matter, man. buddy, words matter more than you can imagine. Your words, your words that you're listening to, the words that you're talking, the words you're talking about somebody, the words that you're talking to me, to me your words, words will lead you into a place of, uh, of idle, words will lead you into a path you don't want to be in, words will lead you out, I, 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 and, and there's words, everybody's talking, but more, more important than anything else is what are you talking my dad would say this, and when I was a kid, I couldn't figure it out for a little bit. He said, you know, when you're driving, the car you have to watch out for the most is the one that's behind the one in front of you. <laughs> right? So the car, and so I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And it'd always be when somebody else is doing something. He's like, yeah, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you drive one day, you're going to really have to watch out for that car behind the one in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's me. <laughs> I see what you did there, <laughs> Dad. Right? He he would he was famous for these little funny one-liners, and and he always he'd repeat it. Now I realize he'd repeat them like twelve thousand times in my lifetime. And um, anyway, praise the Lord. I love you, Dad. And I find myself doing the same thing now. So it's just funny. All right. Um, <clears throat> so he says, reject those. Have nothing to do with those. In verse sixteen, he says, pay close attention to yourself circle, underline, highlight, and your doctrine, the words that you're teaching, okay, the words you're, you're, that you're building your life on. And then if you jump to chapter uh, 6, man, it's, it's even 5, it talks about how you talk to an elder, words. Don't rebuke an elder and treat him like a father. Like he, he tells you how to, how to talk to, because how many of you know it matters how you say what you say? It's not what you say, it's how you say what you say. So he's talking again, it's about words. This whole book, I mean, can you see this? The whole book is Paul talking to his son about words. And then he talks in, in, in chapter 6, he says, now, um, there's, a, there's a lot of words. This is chapter 6, verse 3 through 5. He says, withdraw. He says, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree with the sound doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ and to the godly teaching, verse 4, he says, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies. They like to fight about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions. He says, you know, the constant friction. You ever been there? Like, just like constant friction? He said, uh, guess what you need to do? Uh, you need to remove yourself from those things. 
He, said, he tells us, withdraw. That's at the beginning. He says, withdraw from these careless fighting words that take away from what God is doing. The, the, the truth who think godliness is a means of finance. Okay, they rob. They've been robbed of truth. They think that all of what... They're taken away from what God's doing to only do something for themselves. He says, leave those. Withdraw from those. Okay? And then he says in verse 20 of that same, which is the end of chapter, or 1 Timothy 1, the end of his letter, kind of wrapping up. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm one, please. I'll, I'll take the check. No, no, I got it. No, no. And then someone, hey, um, Timothy, <clears throat> guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge. So, hey, I got this. Hey, you know, as we're going, as we're walking out the door, it's like, I got this, you know. Uh, hey, kind of let's sum it up. He said, turn away from that. So I, I, want, I, I just talking tonight about, again, borders are drawn from battles. And the battle that we're facing and that we're fighting is the battle of words. I want to look tonight at not just this letter and see that how important it is as, as Paul, a father, talked to a son. I want to look at what to do when I'm in a battle of words and when I have the wrong words, how to get the right words. Because it matters. Maybe you're in a battle of words. And again, you, we have to lay some words down. And no matter what's going on, again, I want you to see it's the strength of words that can either defeat you or put you over the top. Okay? So <clears throat> I, I want a couple of things that I, I, I jotted down, just some thoughts. Um, wrong words kill and destroy and work against the very purposes of God in your life. Your issue, it's words. I'll just say, there's, here's, you, you, you've just been asking the Lord. Your issue is words. You're, and this is, I already had spoken this tonight, but you, you're participating in conversations that you don't have grace for because God's not in it. Right. Burdened by things that you can't get relief from uh, when you pray because you won't put them down. There's not grace for a care you're not meant to carry, or words, you're not meant to carry. There's not grace for that. You have to be willing to put that down. Yeah, but you, yeah, but I just, and I just, this report, there's no grace for the evil report. There's a God report, and the question is, which one are you going to hold? Come all who are burdened, and I'll give you rest. What does he say? Lay those things down. And take up my yoke. Come hook up with me. Partner with me. Um, he, he takes the heavy. I get the strength I need. That's what happens. In the battle you're in, we're going to get to the, the story here. In the battle you're in, if you'll come unto him and you'll lay down your, the burden that you've been heavied with and you take up and hook up with what he's saying, again, that's your choice. I'm not, I'm not trying to make you step across any river here today. That's your choice. I, I, because it's not going to be a giant, it's not going to be a mountain, it's not going to be a doctor's, it's going to be a report. It's going to be a word that keeps you and me from a place of experiencing whether I see the manifestation of whatever it is or not. That would keep, it's a word that would keep me from experiencing life. Now, I'm going to pull a country song because that's always a good idea in a, in a Wednesday night sermon. <laughs> I was in my earth. Okay, come on, help me out with some lyrics. And then something happened. I was enjoying life, and it was I had a lot of life before me, and all of a sudden everything changed in a moment because I got a word that wasn't from the Lord. Not in that song. But you can have that very thing that's word from the Lord and, stop and turn you on a dime. Yeah. And you can say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, you can turn right, turn that around. You could, we used to sing this song, God's going to turn that thing around. Because you could just pull up, he turned my morning into dancing. You could get that word and say, Lord, I've been mourning here. But you said, you put, I'm, I'm going to put on this for a spirit of heaviness. I'm gonna, you, 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 you have a choice. 
You have a choice. Yeah, but this hasn't happened. I'm not seeing this and, and this and this and this. And they were saying this and they were saying this. <clears throat> hey, you know what we were talking about over coffee just a moment ago? Words. See, Timothy was crying out for help. Things were good at that moment. And, and Paul, as a father, um, in, he was about to be crying out for help. Excuse me. Timothy, in 2 Timothy, he's ready to quit. And he's, he, he, he gave him what he needed at the beginning. And then he kind of, in a sense, pokes him back here to finish. Because even if you're tired, can I tell you, just getting the right words, it'll pick you right back up. And not only will it pick you back up, it'll give you a plan. And sometimes, and I think that this is, this is what I heard uh, in my heart. Some of you are tired just simply because you don't have, and you can't see a way out. You don't have a plan. You, don't have, you don't, can't see a step forward. You know why? You don't have a word from God. See, the power, the, for Psalms 119, 105. God's word is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. Everybody say that. God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto... No, no, no. It's a light unto my path. Sorry. Not for you, Mo. Not for you. Did, let's read it again. God's word is a lamp unto Nate's feet. Is that what it says? No. Whose feet is it a lamp unto? No, no. Mine. No, no, no. Victor, can you read it proper? Your word is a lamp unto Nate's feet. Right? No, who's... Oh, hold on, hold on. You're telling me God's word is a lamp for your feet? Yeah. No, it's a lamp for my feet. Yeah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have, I guess we're going to have to fight over this. Yeah. Whose word? God's word is a lamp to whose feet? My. No, no, no. God's word is a lamp to whose feet? My, my feet. My. Whoa. The, the word of God the power, is not only powerful, it's incredibly personal, and it shines upon the path where I'm at right now, and it shines on the he- up ahead for where- from where I'm at right now. It, the, the, the directions for your life, the step in the moving forward comes from the Word of God. His Word is a lamp unto your feet, and He says, up here, take a left, and for Tom, it's up there, and take a right, and for him, it's like, uh, back up three steps, and you turn. And the word that comes out tonight, the Holy Spirit just jumps in here and he takes it and he goes, whoop, because the word of God is a lamp unto whose feet? So if it's dark, what do you need? That's it. If you're heavy, what do you need? Whose word? Why? Because his word is my word. His word's my word. It's, 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 it's my, he, his word is a lamp unto my feet. That's my word. God speaks. When he speaks, he's putting things together, and he's getting all these things, and he's like, here, Ev, it's for you because of what's going on in you. And I don't sleep, and I don't slumber, and I know the hair's on your head. And guess what? I'm watching over my word to perform it. And guess what? I got something good for you tomorrow. And my mercies and all this, you're like, yeah, but I, yeah, but I, yeah, but I. And my mercy, it's new for you tomorrow. And so here's my word for you today. And you know, there's a, there's a word that his word, it, it, even it'll stay the same. And even if you left that word, you know, you can go back to that word. He's like, wow, that's a good word. <sighs> Remember those words, Tim? Those words that were spoken to you, get those out. Keep them before you. Well, yeah, that was yesterday's word. No, no. Who's, hold on, let's go back and read it. Was that yesterday's word or was that my word? It's my word. It's my word. When I don't hold my word, I can't see a step forward. When I don't hold a word from God as that's a word for me, I don't have anything to walk on. See, the Bible says that we're to walk by faith but, and not by sight. But faith comes by hearing and hearing comes, or let me say it this way. Faith comes by receiving the word of God. That's how faith comes. You receive it. How do you receive it? Hey, Ben, I have this for you. And now when I give this to you, 
If I had this, I don't know, let's say I had a keychain. I said, hey, Ben, I got this keychain for you. And I give it to Ben. Then whose keychain is it? No, that's mine, right? No, whose is it? Why? Because it was given to him. So now he owns it. Now he puts his keys on it. Now he starts his car with it. Now he makes his way with that. Because it's his. Why? Because it was given to him from me. When God gives me a word, guess whose word it is? My word. And when I get a word from God for me, it gives me a step forward from where I'm at today. It's the most crazy thing. It gives me a step forward from where I'm at tomorrow. Whoa, that is, that's tripping me out a little bit. Like God's word, it's, it goes with me. Just like him. It goes with me. So let's keep going here. So the war over words. So um, we're going to have to learn to feed ourselves on what God is saying versus feeding ourselves on what anybody else is saying because those words are inferior to what God has said. We're going to have to learn to feed ourselves on what God has said Versus what everybody else is saying, because what everybody else is saying is inferior to what God has. So we, as a father, we say this to our kids, um, hey, why do we have to do that? Because I, you guys got it. You got it, because I said so. So because I said so, I see something that you might not. Hmm. We use that as mom and dad, I see something that you do not. Because I said so. So if God said so, then maybe he some, sees some things that you and I don't see. And the same way if you try to explain to your two-year-old, because I said so, and they'd say, huh? If God tried to explain to you and me what he, what he said because he said so, we'd go, huh? And it would be unfruitful. The best thing is to simply say, get in the car. <laughs> Why? Because I said so. So when you get a, get a word from the Lord, you and I, we just got to remember, God said so. God said so. If God said so, he sees some things that I don't, I may not know about or need to know. All right, let's keep going here. So <clears throat> again, watch yourself. Um, Oh, this is good. This is good. Um, in war, there is selflessness that is dangerous to you and your company. In war, there is selflessness, not selfishness, but selflessness, not being aware of yourself. You need to be aware of what words you're listening to, not just what everybody else. There are sometimes people, you're trying to help somebody, and you're just, you're being selfless. But that selflessness is actually putting you and them at jeopardy because all of that stuff, the longer you are just in that and they're not in a receiving mode, they're choosing to just keep on holding this. It's kind of like jumping in to help somebody drowning without a life preserver. And you're going down, both of you. You ever seen that? Both drowned. Why? Because they're, they're panting, panicking, frantic, and all they can think about is themselves. And if you're going to help anybody, you better think about yourself. I'm going down. Hey, life preserver. Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. So pay attention to yourself. Let me say it this way. Uh, should the air lose cabin, cabin lose air pressure? Please, uh, you're going to find these things fall from the ceiling. And I'd ask that you please put your oxygen mask on. Then proceed to help your child. I was trying to help my child. It matters what words you're holding. Well, I'm just giving out. 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 You ever been there? You got to be careful. When you're just giving out, you're just giving out, you're just giving out. Because sometimes when you're just giving out, you're just giving out, you don't realize how much you're just letting in. You're just letting in. You're just letting in. Okay? 
So he says, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Lord. We're, we're doing good. We're going to get to this and just put a bow on it. It's awesome. Um, so let's go back to 1 Timothy 1.18. So you wage a good warfare by prophecies or by the words, a word from the Lord. That's how you go. That's how you. And, and again, God's word is my word. It's a word to my feet. Okay. So. <clears throat> so let's get back on track. And let's reestablish some borders, some promise borders. We talked about promises are truly uh, how God has, has laid, you know, he used his words to establish the borders of the promised land. He uses words or his promises to establish borders that you and I are to have and occupy. That's my land. Listen, some of you, I don't know if you, anybody here, is there anybody here that has more than 40 acres? Anybody here? More than 40 acres. Okay, anybody? I don't see any hands. Anybody? Anybody have a parent that has more than forty acres? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I have more than forty acres. Not here, here, but in Oklahoma, I have eighty acres. God gave it to me. Wow, that's a cool testimony. He said, "Get out some money on your house at the interest rates right, and I want you to put that money in in the bank." So I did. And two and a half months later, God testimony. My, my buddy in Oklahoma said, hey, did you hear that this land is going into court auction? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, on such and such a date. Come, come on. We should bid on it. It's right next to my house. It would be great hunting land. Okay. So I bid on 240 acres. I'm like, did I lose my mind? And I won the bid. Huh? Now what? I got land that's worth more than my house. What did I just do? How am I going to make that payment? Uh, go ahead and just sell the top 80 and the bottom 80, and you can have the middle 80. Okay. So that's what I did. Thank you, Lord. And we, we started a farm called Genesis 15 Farms. Come into a, a land that I will show you. And I will give you. And so that's just the testimony of the goodness of God. Again, um, I'm sharing this. Not, that's not, that, even that, I wasn't even thinking about sharing that. Uh, expand your borders. Expand your tents. You can have, you want 40? You want 80? You got that in your heart? You had something in the desire of your heart? The Lord placed that there. Back to my 80 acres. There's areas of my land that I've had for two years, and I'm an adventurous guy, and I hunt, and I've scouted, but there's still areas of that land bigger than this room that I've not put my foot on. And that's only 80 acres. Guess what? If somebody was to be in there building on that spot, that's my land. Whether I know that spot well or not, that's my land. Yeah. The promises of God for you and me, that's, those are yours, whether you know that spot or not. That's, it, 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 if it's within the boundaries of his word that is given to you, that's yours. That's whose word? Whose word? Your word. Because... His word is a lamp unto my feet. So his word is. Okay. So <clears throat> back on track. So let's reestablish. Let's get back on track. Let's reestablish some borders. Let's reestablish some promises and plans that God has for you. Because he hasn't changed his mind. Look at this. The gifts and callings of God. Romans chapter 11. He, do he doesn't change his mind. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. For the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Uh, what, what gifts, okay, charisma, uh, you can call it charis. You can call what is the gift from God? I mean, you, are you going to put all that only in, uh, well, I have the gift to sing? Or how about anything that's given of God? Is that a gift? Okay. The, there's gifts from God that he does not change in his mind. There are gifts and plans and borders that he's given to you, promises. He's not changing his mind. Oh, you know, you know, I know I said that, but, you know, because of where you're at, that, that one doesn't apply to you. I'm going to have to change my mind about that gift and about that promise and about that call because you're really just not qualified. No, again, we're going to reestablish our borders. Now, let's go to this, and this is our closing passage. And so when we're going to go after our borders, we're going to just, we're going to just say this, and you can say this with me. Get it all. 
get it all. I went to the end. There's an old song, can't. And I. Okay. And you know what he stole from you if you're in the dark? Words. He stole words. Mark chapter 4, if you don't understand this, you don't understand anything. You won't understand any parable. You won't understand anything that God's talking about. The thief comes for what? To steal the word. He comes to steal the word. And we something that, that uh, I had said today in talking, um, you know, sometimes we, we know the enemy's coming for the word. But did you know, just in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, uh, one plants, one waters, and, and both are on God's team, but God brings the increase. And I was, it was just so funny. I was just going through a couple of things that I had been writing down before, and the Lord's like, yeah, the devil can't steal the water, though. He, say, he can't steal the water. So sometimes the, the heart's not ready to receive the word. In other words, you, it's not ready to plant yet, but, but that watering, softening that heart. So keep on watering. Keep on pouring in. Keep on. Maybe you're not ready to receive this promise yet, but guess what? Keep watering. Yeah. Keep watering, and it won't be long. And that till into that ground, and that plow into that ground, and keep on. Keep watering. Keep watering. Just because you can't receive it yet, just because the enemy keeps coming out, water that ground until it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that was free. So, First Samuel chapter thirty, three through eight. We're going to pick up here, and I, I, I want to uh, put uh, a, a setting here as we're going to recover all. David, this is about King David and, and his men, but let's go back and have just a little bit of history with David. David, when, when the prophet was called to, to, to Jesse's house and said, hey, I, there's, a man, there's a young man here that's going to be the next king, call your sons. David wasn't called. So he was rejected by his father and his brothers. David was, go bring the cheese to your brothers. Words, right? David was rejected um, not only by his father, but he was rejected uh, by Saul. Matter of fact, he was from his own country. As a young man, he was warring and fighting for, and now the song comes forward. David has killed this many. Saul has killed this many. David has killed this many. And now David's running for his life. So he's rejected by his father. He's rejected by his country. Then he goes to the, the enemy's camp and thinks, I'm going to take hide out there. And then it's not long. And guess what happens there? He's rejected. He's rejected by the enemy. And now he's out by himself and he's got his men. And he's like, in a sense, a loner, but a few men. Or a few hundred men, and he's in this clan, in a sense. And here's what happens, picking up, okay? <clears throat> David and his men came to a city. Came, they came back home after being gone. And they found it burned down. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. So David and the troops with him lifted up their voices and wept loudly until they had no strength left to weep. I just want to put... I just want us to take a moment and just think of, of in that setting. What words are being bombarded here? What's happening to my wife right now? What are they doing to my little girl? What are they, what are they, what are they got my son doing? Oh, my gosh. Ah! I've been screaming. What do you do? What do you do? You ever seen the gladiator, the movie The Gladiator? Comes home. What, what do you do? What, 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 what do you do? You lose your mind. This is what's happening. Okay? Anybody, anybody had all of their stuff taken, their, all their family, all this? Guess what? You can still have it all back. <laughs> so here's what happened. So they wept until they had no strength left to eat. Maybe you just don't have any strength left because you've been robbed from, you've been plundered. There's nothing left, man. I'm telling you, and it's not just a report. Look around, man. Okay, okay. Look around, man. David's two wives had also been taken captive. Verse six. 
David was greatly distressed because, <clears throat> so David wept aloud. Okay, there we go. David was greatly distressed because the cities were burned and his wives were taken. Help me out, read, help me read that. And David was greatly distressed because the city was burned and the wives were taken. Oh, wait. What, why was he distressed? Because the men were talking. <laughs> Words. What what had him what had him so wrapped up here? Was it the wives? Was it the cities being burned? <coughs> no, you know what it was. It was some words, because the, even the people that he's fought with and he's laid his life down, that he's been loyal to, they've been loyal to him. They've exchanged blood. They've killed for one another. They're now talking of stoning him. Went from bad to worse. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and his daughters. But gay, and so here's what I want, want to say: If you're ever gonna, if you're ever gonna win a battle, win the battle with the Lord, and if you're gonna take and occupy the borders that He has for you, if you're gonna fulfill the plan that He has for your life, you're gonna have to learn this: how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. There's a every person in here is is has will be going through a battle that all hell will break loose. But when all hell breaks loose, there is a word for heaven, from heaven, for you. Thank you Lord. And if we'll learn that all, all you, know, you know all I need? I need a word. I need a word. Because a word comes with a plan. When you get your word, because it's my word, it comes with a plan. It says, you go here. So here's what he said. But David found his strength he found strength in the Lord his God. Let's keep going. We'll go through verse 8. Then David said to uh, the priest, he said, The son, the son of Am Amalek, bring, uh, bring me the ephod. The ephod was the piece uh, of the, the vest of, of the priest where they would seek the Lord and get the word from the Lord. Uh, bring me, i got to seek the Lord. i got to get a word from the Lord. This is all, that's what he said. In modern day, what we're talking about, I need a word from God. Bring me the ephod. I need, I need to talk with God. So he brought it to him. And so David inquired the Lord, and he said, Hey, uh, should I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Lord, what, what, what should I do? I need a word from you. What, tell me what to do. I'm, they're wanting to kill me here. They're, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? Will I overtake them? He said, Pursue them, the Lord answered. You'll certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Wow. So David was able... So next, next verse, I know you only have three, eight. Maybe we'll just go through. I got it right here. In verse 9, so David and his 600 men went to the brook of Besor, where some stayed behind because 200 men were too exhausted to cross the brook. But David and 400 men continued in pursuit. Oops. We'll get that later. They continued and they, they crossed and they continued in pursuit. And you know what happened? They got everything back. You know what David said after he got a word of the Lord? It's interesting. From verse 8 to verse 9, something happened. Go back to verse 8 and then we'll hit verse 9. This is what I wanted to close on. Something happened. David inquired of the Lord. He got a word of the Lord. Should I go? He said, go. You're going to overtake them. Jump to verse 9. David and 600 men with him went. What happened? David got a word of the Lord, and then he agreed with it, and he said, hey, guys, come on, get up. we can, we got to go get our wives and children back. Let's go. Something he, he commanded. He commanded. He came into agreement, and he agreed with the word of God and he agreed with it to the people and guess what David who was rejected exiled exiled again defeated who was supposed to come become king nobody's for him even those that fought for him now are wanting to kill him and he's supposed to be king it's hopeless no he got a word of the Lord and he came into agreement he said come on guys get up get up John get up Peter, get up right now. Let's go. We got our wives and children. Let's go get them back. They're talking about stone, and all of a sudden, they're like, that word of the Lord positioned that. Yeah, let's go. 
Let's go. Rah! So I wrote this. David was able to, to, to get rid of the anguish and lead a people who wanted him dead, get his children and wives back, and because he learned how to minister to himself and get a word from the Lord and recognize that all I need is a word from the Lord, he was now able to lead a people and become a king. What would have happened if David didn't get a word from the Lord in that moment? Would he be a king? Would the story be different? story be different. Would God's plan have been changed? Does God change his plan because of your and my moment of anguish, of agony, of laying down? No. Nope. He still has a word, and that word is for him, and that word would lead him out of anguish and lead him into a place where he was called to be, which is to lead a people and to become a king. I'm just here to tell you tonight, the, the calls on God of God on your life, the call that he has upon this house, the call that he has upon your family, God's not changing his mind. But you know what we need? We need a word. We need a word so that we get up and we stretch out and we occupy the full 80, the full promise of the place that he's called my family to be, the place he's called this house to be. And you know, we need to kind of break out break out of these walls. I was talking with Landon today, and I said, you know, I really believe this is where we're at. I believe we need to get out of the house, even as a church. We need to get, just even get out of the house more. You know, just be the, out. Just, just get out of the house. Just, we need to get, just grow a little larger. Grow a little larger. All you, we just need is get back out. Those words Thanks, Paul, for taking time to talk with me and grabbing me that coffee this morning. Changed my life. I set my course. It redirected, it restored, and I got it all back. You can have your joy back. You can have health back. You can have peace back. You can have even your finances back when you get a word of the Lord what comes with the word of the Lord, it's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. What comes with the word of the Lord to you is the next step forward. We need to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. When we hold a word from the Lord, guess what you'll have? <laughs> look at look. A way to walk. And guess what? Through the valley. Up and over. Amen. Let's stand tonight. And I'll give you the announcements as we, as we pray and go. How's that? And if you're giving tonight, we can do that online. Or off, the ushers will have offering uh, buckets on the stage here. Um, but I, man, I believe that God is wanting you and I to hold his word like this. That's my word. That's my word. You know why? Because God said so. And he's carrying it through all the way. The strength that, that I need is in that word to lead. The strength that I need to, to become what I was anointed for. You've been anointed for some things in this season. But guess what? It's not going to come without a fight. What fight? Fight of words. Because the enemy wants it. He wants what God said about you. So, Father, we just thank you tonight for the words that you've spoken. I thank you for words that have been declared uh, from the beginning uh, to every individual here, just the words. Holy Spirit, bring, bring to our remembrance the things that you have spoken. You said you would do that. So I'm asking you even just to recall, oh, even just the stirring up, uh, uh, of, uh, of those words and those gifts and those callings stirred up in the name of Jesus tonight in you. Stirred up tonight in you. Called up. Called out. Called over. Huh. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father. 
I just heard that in my heart. Somebody's like, I wish I could have a do-over. I wish I could have a do-over. I wish I could have a do-over. The Lord said, just start. Start right now. Start right now. It's right now. It's right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for the words that we need uh, for our family, for our children, words you've spoken in the past, but Father, our now word. We thank you for now words where we've been holding on to others, we, uh, where we've been engaged in the wrong words. If that's the case, uh, we just repent of that right now. Places where we've uh, spoken wrong, where uh, maybe uh, in the name of Jesus we plead the blood of over words uh, that, that nothing, no weapon formed against uh, or that we, even if it came out of our mouth but with that word towards another, we just, we, we bind that up. We thank you that it would come to nothing. We repent of those words. Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for just, uh, just any place, uh, just to just show us where we've been uh, in, in, in part, partnering with uh, the wrong words. In those places, we just repent. We lay them at your feet tonight. Lord, we lay those at your feet tonight, and we pick up your word. Holy Spirit, thank you for bringing us a right now word, a right now word, a my word, a my word to my feet and to the path ahead. And so thank you, Lord, for the clarity that comes from your word. And at this place, in these hearts, even tonight, there would be a new sense of light. Both uh, as a burden, but also that which would bring sight. Seeing the way ahead. And you'd be able to say, uh, I finished the work. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You see, I finished finished in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful uh, word.